Secretary Clinton uh, established the office of the secretary of the uh, office of the special representative to Muslim communities uh, two weeks after the president gave his historic speech in Cairo. And as you know, in that speech, the president laid out a framework for engagement that was based on mutual interest and mutual respect. What Secretary Clinton has asked me to do is to develop more partnerships around the world with Muslim communities based on mutual interest and mutual respect and to develop connectivity on a people-to-people -people basis. So my job is to work with embassies around the world to develop this kind of partnership, to use the might of the United States governor, uh, government as the convener and the facilitator and the intellectual partner with people on the ground who have ideas, so from civil society and foundations and students and uh, faith leaders and others, and to find ways that we can actually add value by bringing these ideas forward um, and help seed new initiatives globally. You know, I have uh, I have had the luxury of being able to travel uh, quite a bit since I was sworn in um, in the fall. I've been to almost uh, 17 countries, I think, uh, right now, uh, everywhere from Brazil to Kazakhstan, from Nigeria to India, from Malaysia, now here in, in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're traveling uh, around, working with our embassies, because it's a priority for our government to work, no matter if, a, if it's a Muslim community and a Muslim-majority country, or Muslims as Muslims as minorities. There's a lot of diversity out there in, the, in, in Muslim communities around the world, and we are seeing a lot of issues that come forward. Um, issues of education, issues of health, issues of integration and assimilation. There are quite a few issues on the table. The issue that you raise, uh, violent extremism, um, that ideology is permeating in every crevice of the world. It's not, uh, it's not confined to a, a, per, a particular region of the world. And certainly, when I have conversations with young Muslims around the world, uh, that issue comes up. Um, what we know for sure is that the most credible voices to be able to push back against that violent ideology are Muslims themselves. And what I have seen is that there are a lot of communities on a local level, and that's where you have to focus what's happening on a local level. Have the mechanisms and have ideas on how to actually prevent that kind of ideology from seeping into their local communities. What our job should be uh, is to work with these communities, um, and, and it's, it's, it's civil society uh, and governments around the world that should be listening to these ideas and help build, uh, build these ideas out so that they can push back uh, and create an alternative narrative to the narrative of violent extremism. So let's go back to the, the, the thing I started with, which is how the president has wanted us to engage with Muslims around the world. It is a priority for this president. In fact, on his inauguration day, in his inauguration speech, he spoke directly to Muslims. For historic, first time in history. He also, a few months later, gave a very historic speech in Ankara, and certainly the speech in Cairo, in which he ra lay laid out a very large and important vision of engagement based on mutual interest and mutual respect. The tools that we have to use to engage are really, uh, really robust. There are a lot of things out there that you can do. We have, for decades, the United States government has had programs with engagement and Fulbright scholarships in which we go back and forth and build dialogue and exchange. We have all kinds of speaker programs in which we bring speakers from other countries to our country and we send Americans to other countries. We do all kinds of diplomacy. So this kind of thing is going on. In addition to those kinds of programs, we are engaging even more fully. Um, as I said, the Secretary Secretary of State established my position at the Department of State to work on a people-to-people -people level. So we're able to work with civil society and we're trying to do as much as we can through our embassies um, to reach out and to find ways that we can um, bring ideas forward. In addition to all these things, we are naming the naming of the special envoy to the OIC is another added value for us because Rashad Hussein, who has been working at the White House for the last year, will be working directly on developing partnerships 
with the OIC. And of course, as you know, it's a 57 member body and it's an important uh, vehicle for, for change uh, on the planet. Um, and Rashad will be working on very specific uh, initiatives with the OIC. So we're working on a people to people level, we're working on a government to government level. And in addition to that, we're doing all traditional uh, kinds of diplomacy that we've done in the past. And together, it's a comprehensive approach to engagement uh, in the 21st century. I'm going to answer in a very personal way. My hero is my mother, um, and she's my hero for a lot of different reasons. But most importantly, it's because of the way she, she raised me to understand the importance of diversity. We grew up in the United States as immigrants. I came to the United States when I was a baby. Um, and all through my growing up, um, taught me how to respect people of all faiths, of all cultures, of all ethnicities, respected very fully um, what it meant to be American. Um, she taught me how to be proud of my heritage, but also be proud of my country. Um, she's a woman who um, was a physician, um, and so sort of healing was part and parcel of what she did. She was very sure to raise my brother and me to understand that one person can make a difference. And so in every stage growing up, um, she would ask us what we could do for our community. And so whether I volunteered or whether I uh, donated my time to different things, outside of the traditional things that I would do, it was very important for her to raise us that way. And it actually framed the way I thought about things. She put education first, so um, always asked us to be analytical about when we heard things, to actually question what it is that we saw. She's also somebody who, who learned the Quran when she was five and knows the, the Quran very well. And so when I was raised trying to understand how to balance my heritage and my religion, my ethnicity and being American, she helped me navigate through that very well. So she, she explained to us how you can be both modern and Muslim, how you can be somebody who respects others yet be, um, be faithful to your faith. Um, and finally, uh, I think most importantly, um, my mother is somebody who, even to this day, helps to give me the inspiration to do more than I ever can. So for all those reasons and more, um, she is my hero. Thank you.